what are you seeing that's worked so well for the defense and and how far could it carry this team if the offense does let's say remain underwhelming could, could this uh carry you to multiple playoff victories if they keep playing the way they're playing they played these past two weeks you know without a doubt in my mind this can be a defense that can carry this team deep into the playoffs and to me the biggest thing that's that's pretty much changed with this defense is you don't see any more solo tackles out there. You don't see any guys, you know, one-on-one tackles out there because to me that's one of the hardest things to do in the National Football League is to, is to tackle a guy open in open still like that. And we saw from this last week and the first week, you know, there's multiple hats at the ball each and every time. One, two, three, bang, 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 hats just coming to the ball and corralling, and those guys are gang tackling out there. So you don't see a lot of – yards after the catch once these receivers do catch the ball this team is flying around and right now they're hitting on all cylinders and that's not even without talking about you know what this defensive line has been able to do to the uh, opposing offensive line so far this year so to me this is this is a defense that without a doubt can carry this team long into the playoffs if they remain healthy and if they remain playing at this uh, extremely high level now you were on that jags team did it go to the afc title game and play the patriots mm-hmm. is that what i remember yeah we, we, yeah we got brady man you know we got brady nice. like a lot of a lot of teams out here you got uh, bortles football league seem to do you got bortles <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's that's happened to you, Barry. <laughs> how, how much would you say that jags defense clearly better than this defense are they comparable how, how would you compare and contrast I would say they're they're very they're very comparable. Um, our defensive line in, in Jacksonville in 2017. I mean, we, we were extremely stacked. I mean, we had a younger Dante Fowler out there, Calais Campbell, Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, we, we were Marcel Darius. I mean, we had a stacked defensive line. So, I mean, we, we didn't have any any we didn't have a Mark, Micah Parsons though. So I would say that this D line um, maybe gives them a little notch ahead just because they got a Micah Parsons on their their D line as well, but. We were stacked. I mean, we were stacked. They called us Saxonville for a reason because those guys were getting after the quarterback, and it definitely made my job a heck of a lot easier back there being in the secondary. So I would say these defenses are very comparable, and if you know if Dallas's defense continues to to hunt the quarterback the way they've been doing, I mean, the, the sky's the limit. That secondary play is going to be it's going to be easy for those guys back there, and and Diggs is going to be able to do what he does best, and that's you know keep his eyes on the quarterback and go ahead and make and take gambles on the ball because. You know it has to come out fast, especially when you got 11 out there hunting. So, to me, uh, these defenses are very comparable, and, and hopefully they can have the same result, but, you know, take it a little step further than we did. Now, I know you love watching your safeties. How, how about our guy Donovan Wilson on Sunday? The dude was all over the place. He, he was flying. He was flying all over the place. And he kind of reminded me of, you know, J.J. Wilcox, you know, back in the day, how his ability to just fly around and, and make big collisions out there. Um to me, I thought they would miss Curse a little bit more than they did. Um, but that defensive line, the way they were hunting, I guess he didn't. His play really didn't come into effect. But uh, I mean, that that safety room is extremely deep. When you talk about Curse, Hooker, uh, Wilson out there, and I even seen Mukwamu, um getting some snaps as well. He's very versatile as well. So this is a, an extremely deep safety room, and I would have to say it's probably the deepest it's been since uh, my time being at the being with the Cowboys, and even before that. So. Um, Hats goes off to that room. I mean, they're they're playing extremely well. Barry, when you do watch this defense play and then you watch Dan Quinn, what's the next thing that you could see him doing with Micah Parsons? I mean, he's going to have to be creative because of teams probably locking on to him. But what is there something you think in your mind like, okay, this is the next thing you're going to see Micah Parsons do? I mean, he, he's he's doing a lot with Micah Parsons right now. He's kind of like a defensive weapon. I mean, you see him on the outside. You see him at that stack linebacker position. Um, but I, what I'd like to see just a little bit more when you're playing against, you know, the better quarterbacks out there, I would like to see him, you know, do more stuff up the middle. Maybe do some stunts with those defensive tackles. I mean, we've seen it last year when he blitzed up the middle. He was able to get pressure on those quarterbacks extremely quick. So I know he's doing a heck of a job at the second level with the linebacker position. He's doing a hell of a job coming off the edge and just being just fierce, just motor nonstop. Um, but when we get to those better quarterbacks and maybe they had better um, tackle situations on those teams, I would like to see him do a little bit more on the inside, maybe blitzing from that linebacker position, maybe off the ball a little bit as well, just to confuse the better quarterbacks out there. But right now, I mean, Dan Quinn is hitting on all cylinders when it comes to uh, Michael Parsons. It's Barry Church here with you on 105.3 The Fan. Did he watch the Eagles last night? Oh, I did. I did watch those Eagles. What do you think? Cowboys, Eagles, who's going to win this division? Uh, it's, 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 mm, man, you put me on the spot with that one. I mean, 
I, I really like what the Eagles are looking like offensively right now. I have to say, with with Hurts, I had my doubts, you know, thinking about his, his throwing the football and accuracy and all that. But I don't know who he worked with in the offseason, but it seemed to me that he, <laughs> he, he kind of found it a little bit yeah. as far as throwing the football. We all knew he had that athleticism. We all knew he was going to be able to, to use that read option. He was going to be able to perform that well. But when you're talking about, you know, throwing a football accurate and uh, making, you know, great decisions as a quarterback and keeping the ball out of harm's way so far, I know it's early, only week two, but, I mean, the, the guy looks special back there. He looks special back there. And when you got a guy like A.J. Brown, who's a bona fide number one out there, he can cause problems for your uh, defense. And he's not the only one. You know, you got uh, Smith, the former first rounder, and then you got a great tight end in, in Dallas Goddard as well. So, they're loaded at the skill position offensively. Offensive line, they have a solid offensive line as well, led by Jason Kelsey. So to me, they're, they're going to be a formidable opponent, you know, when we go against them, I think, in week seven or eight. And uh, defensively, I mean, you got to like what they did on that D-line. I mean, I, I know we haven't seen much of Jordan Davis out there, and Cox is always going to be a beast as well. But I like what they did on the defensive side of the ball, secondary flying around. So they'll definitely be a, a tough matchup when the Cowboys uh, face the Eagles. Barry, when – Okay, you know, you being that former, you know, safety and big time hitter and all those things, you know, everything about your game was with the physicality and all that. When you have a, a, a team that has a backup quarterback, you know, can you give us what your thoughts is? You, you, your defense is playing well, and but you got a backup quarterback running your offense. Is it is it even more pressure on you guys to have to? perform or is it like no we just got to go out there and, and, and make plays no matter what uh you got to make plays no matter what but i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie i mean when you when you when when i was playing and you know romo went down or something like that you know it was just a heightened sense that you know hey we, we got to step up we can't let you know we can't let these guys get an easy score or we can't give up the big play with a busted coverage because you just never knew, you know, what was going to happen offensively. I mean, we were out there, you know, Matt Castle, no disrespect, but, you know, he was nowhere near the quarterback that Tony Romo was. So sure. when Romo went down for those times, I mean, it was definitely heightened pressure on the defensive side of the ball. And we were, and we weren't, you know, that, that you know, we, we took the ball away a little bit, but we were never, you know, household names on the defensive side of the ball. So it was even more pressure on us to play outside of our skills. And, um, you know, I think that hurt us in the long run because everybody was reaching just to try to make that play and just try to make that, that, um, that, that touchdown saving whatever to help our offense out, and it ended up biting us in the butt. So defensively, I mean, when you're playing with a backup quarterback, it definitely gives you that heightened sense of we got to play better, but you just don't want to play without our – well, you still want to play within yourself. You don't want to try to be somebody you're not because that's when you get exposed out there. And right now, this, this defense is flying around, and hopefully they can continue that uh, stellar play. Now, what happens when the injury's on the other side of the ball and you're up against a backup? Like, how much more comfortable would you be trying to defend a, a Cooper Rush offense than Dak? Oh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, we, we'd be sending the house at Cooper Rush, man. We, we would, we would have sent the house and maybe have, like, a lurker somewhere in the middle to help pick up crossers, but – we would make him get that ball out of his hands quick, make him think like, oh, man, just speed him up a little bit. Just make him not as comfortable as he is back there. Because I feel like, you know, the Bengals, for some reason, I mean, they, they didn't really send the house as much. And they, they let Cooper Rush get extremely comfortable back there. And he was efficient. He was accurate when, he, when he's comfortable back there. So to me, if I'm going against a Cooper Rush or a backup type quarterback, I'm sending the house. I'm, I'm speeding you up and I'm making making sure you, <laughs> you know that, hey, we're coming after you the entire afternoon. So... Uh, but, you know, Cooper Rush, he, he definitely was able to handle that, and, and he got the job done. Barry Church with us here on the fan. What did you see from Dak in, in, in week one? Uh, I just I, It seemed like rusty to me. You know, he seemed like a guy that, you know, didn't play any preseason. Uh, I know he took his reps, you know, in those combined practices, but you'll never be able to replicate, you know, the game in practice. And it just seemed to me, not even Dak, but just the whole offense as a whole just seemed extremely rusty out there week one. Um, they seemed to step up a little bit when week two came around in Cooper Rush, and I just think that was just the heightened sense of, hey, everybody has to step up because we got a backup quarterback in here. So I think that's what that was. So to me, next week is really going to be, or this week coming up, is really going to be the, the telltale of how um, this team is going to, as a whole, go with Cooper Rush because it's no longer that, all right, man, we, we got hyped for just one game. This is multiple games going in a row, and we'll see how this team performs. So maybe that was the secret sauce to your great Jaguar defense that year. Because you had Bortles, and so you guys just had that heightened sense. You 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 played like you were playing with a backup quarterback every Sunday. 
And I couldn't believe they wouldn't pay the guy the next year. Like, he's the reason we went to the AFC Championship. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. I knew then, uh, well, my career is coming to an end here soon. <laughs> that's, that's bad football ops right there in Jacksonville. You're doing bad, that. bad football ops, man. <laughs> Speaking of those joint practices you guys used to do in, in Oxnard, though, is, is there any fan base that makes you less comfortable to be around than the Raiders? Man, I tell you what, every single time we went up against the Raiders, whether it's a combined practice or a preseason game, I mean, you always had to have your head on a swivel. I mean, <laughs> those fans, there's some rowdy fans over there, and the players hype it up. They feed all into it. You know, I don't think there was one combined practice with the, the Raiders that I've been a part of that didn't end in a fight of some sort. I mean, you had guys that never even threw punches for the Cowboys fighting against the Raiders. I mean, it was <laughs> – Definitely an experience out there, but those guys are definitely rowdy when it comes to their uh, Raiders. Let me ask you this. So you mentioned the name, and I, I, I have a picture on my phone of J.J. Wilcox hitting Dez that time. Barry, you, you, remember, you remember that fight they had that time, Barry, on that field? Oh, I was right there, man. I was okay, playing. Uh, I want to ask I you. I was playing down. Yeah. yeah. How many punches did Wilcox throw before Dez even knew what hit him? I, 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 I think oh, it was, on film it looked like he hit him with five punches before Dez even knew what was happening. Well, you correct, my man. That man <laughs> threw the fastest five punches I... <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Like, it was, I mean, he connected with Dez about three or four of those five punches. Yeah. And it was just like, everybody was like, whoa, what, 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 what just happened? I mean, yeah. it, and kudos to Dez because he had a strong chin. He didn't go down. But I, after those five punches, I'm going to tell you right now, this, he didn't really want any more parts of that. It was one of those situations where, hey, somebody get in front of me real quick while I yell at this guy over there, I mean, those punches that he was throwing, I mean, they were lightning quick. And ever since then, man, I, I've been calling that guy the juice man, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know one he thing. was just tagging him. Yeah, we were watching tape that night, and I remember, like, and, the, and I'll tell you what, the video guys at the Cowboys, they, they film the fights. You, you see what's <laughs> happening. It's pure entertainment. It is. And Wilcox, I mean, his hands were blurs. They were going so yep. fast. And Des like was kind of taking him, like he was getting a hit. And but it's oh, funny yeah. when you brought that name up. I do. I have a picture on my phone of of Des is getting lit up by by. <laughs> Barry, it was one of the classics. It was it, a classic training camp fight, man. It I think was. it started because he like blew him up across the middle or something. He did. And Des got up chirping, and you know yeah. Wilcox got up throwing. You he know? said something that Wilcox <laughs> did not like. And it and it and next thing you know, it was mayhem on that field. So it, oh, it was it was a classic classic throwdown, man. That was a that was a good one. <laughs> is is Wilcox the top of the list when you think of like best fighting teammates you've ever had? Like, is there anybody that compares to Wilcox in your years of of playing football in the league? I'll tell you what, there's three cats that, you know, I would always want with me if I was in a bar and a squabble just happened to have out. It would be Wilcox would be uh, one of those guys. Um, Greg Hardy, and then um, yeah. Tyrone Crawford. There you go. Tyrone yeah. Crawford, man. That dude, Crawford. I, if I'm in a bar fight, I'm in a foxhole, give me yeah. Crawford, and we're getting out of there, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's video evidence that he can get the job done. I like that. Oh, I like that. Doubt, that was impressive. <laughs> what did you think about the way Mike Evans had uh, Tom Brady's back on Sunday? I'm telling you, he... <laughs> He, he either loves Tom Brady or he hates Marshawn Lattimore because those dudes, every time they suit up, they got some type of beef going on. Um, you know, it was he was protecting his quarterback out there. You know, you got to respect that. But to me, I you know, I didn't respect the kind of sneakness he did with it. You know, you go off to the mm -hmm. sidelines, you know, you stay on the sidelines, but then you're coming back on there while the guy's back turned. I, I didn't really like that part of it. But, you know, that's just an offensive thing. You know, us defensive guys, we're going we gonna to say it to your face, man. But that's just how it goes, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, it seemed like Tom Brady was was chirping quite a bit. Are, in your experience, are, do you get like trash talking quarterbacks generally? No, um, Brady he will talk to you. He will talk to you a little bit. Philip Rivers, man. In my time, oh, wow. you know, Philip Rivers, and he he won't curse at you. You know, he won't. You know, he won't curse at a you. A lot of dad gummits from he'll, Phil. <laughs> yeah, he'll dad gummit you to death, man. And he'll he'll let you know if he got you on a play. He'll definitely let you know, man. He, he talks a lot of stuff. Him and Sean Lee used to go at it back in the days, man. Believe it or not, those those two. I mean, they they get after it. But Philip Rivers, man, he'll definitely let you know about it. Now is Sean Lee doing a lot of dad gummits as well? No, see, Sean, 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 he'll kill you with kindness, man. Like, he, he'll kill you with the kind of, oh, that was a good route, man. You almost got me. You almost got me. If you do this here or do that there, you might have a chance. Like, he'll try to coach you up on the field while he's beating you down, man. It, 
it's kind of you like, man, what, what type of trash talking is that? But he gets <laughs> under a lot of people's skin that way. And, it's, and Witten as well. I mean, Witten was a huge t- trash talker, especially in practice, man. Yeah. He just, I don't get it, man. He, he got open and he'll just, he'll let you hear it, man. That was one of my favorite memories of Oxnard, him telling the defensive coaches to get this safety or that safety off the field. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, he was theater. probably talking to me, man, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it was Brodney Poole or something, but that's neither here nor there. Barry, thank you so much. Cowboys going to get the dub? Yeah, we're going to get the dub. We're going to get the dub, man, against New York. I mean, I, I like what New York's been doing so far this year. They're playing solid defense over there. Um, but to me, you know, I, I just think Danny Dimes is, is a turnover waiting to happen, and I think we're going to be able to take advantage of that.